Hello, I'm Professor Song Gao at Duke Quinshan University. Integrated science courses are important divisional foundation courses for all science-oriented students at DKU. The purpose of these courses is twofold, laying a solid foundation in modern sciences and showing connections and integrations across scientific disciplines. Currently, our teaching model has three IS courses on the three key cornerstones of modern science, the physics, chemistry, and biology, each transmitting disciplinary knowledge and training scientific skill sets and mindsets rigorously. Meanwhile, they're also intended to crosstalk with one another in connecting and integrating ideas, equations, theories, and applications. Physics, chemistry, and biology professors co-teach this set of courses. Our science students can take all of them with the goal of establishing an integrated picture of modern science. The IS physics course begins with the core concepts of classical mechanics. Time, space, mass, force, work, energy, momentum, and the physical laws that link them together. Students first learn Newton's law and the law of gravitation as they apply to point mass systems. Subsequently, basic concepts of oscillation and waves, rigid body motion, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, and statistical mechanics are introduced, illustrated with real life examples. For example, physics of cooking, biosphere as a thermal engine to help students view the world in an integrated fashion. The IS chemistry course starts with the introduction to the structure of atoms, molecules, and matter life, followed by an exploration of the dynamic and uh, equilibrium processes during chemical reactions. It explains how atoms, the basic building block of matter, interact with one another and construct the world around us. How subatomic particles, actually electrons, modulate the chemical properties of elements, and how the rearrangement of atoms leads to the varied chemical products in nature and in modern society. This course helps students develop an interdisciplinary perspective, allowing to tackle problems in various fields, such as medicine, molecular biology, environmental science, energy science, material science. The IS biology course employs five themes that describe properties of life, organization, for example, cell structure and uh, function, cycling of energy and matter, for example, cell respiration, uh, photosynthesis, information, for example, DNA, RNA structure, function, replication and repair, uh, homostasis, uh, such as the immune response, and evolution, um, such as organismal diversity, biodiversity in ecosystems. These themes are unified under the organizational principle of scientific method, formulating hypotheses and testing hypotheses with experiments. Case studies and real world examples are discussed, just like in IS physics and IS chemistry courses. Now all three courses uh, have labs to relate to the lecture materials, train um, relevant lab skill sets, and develop student creativity in experimental design. In the demo video you will see next, the three IS courses all center around the essential topic of energy. Taken together, we show how energy obeys common thermodynamic, thermodynamic laws or has applications in different systems. In fact, energy traverses all scientific domains. That it can be discussed in different courses does not mask its ubiquitous presence and common features in nature. In other words, our students learn about this in an integrated fashion. We hope you will like our courses and how we design and deliver them to our students. And we will appreciate your feedbacks very much. In this video, we try to extend the idea of energy as we learned in Newtonian mechanics to the atomic scale. We review the law of conservation of energy first. So energy doesn't disappear. It can change from one form to another form or it can transfer from one object to another object. What happens if you 
go down to the scale of atoms. Atom can also be divided further into fundamental particles. This picture illustrates two kinds of spectra. One is called absorption, the other one is called emission. You see that uh, the spectra here, uh, it shows a few discrete lines. If you still use Newtonian mechanics, you cannot uh, explain this. So a new idea needs to be proposed. It was proposed by Niels Bohr more than 100 years ago. The comparison between this idea and the classical understanding of energy is illustrated in this simple picture. Similar to what we have done in Newtonian mechanics, we build up a mathematical foundation for this. One way to explain this is proposed by Erwin Schrodinger, the so-called Schrodinger wave equation. Once you find out a solution mathematically like this, there are some conditions that you need to satisfy to make this not only works for the mathematics, but also works for the physics. One condition is so-called boundary conditions. All things are made of atoms. So this sentence is a fundamental understanding of one main discipline in physics. And it all can also be extended to the some content you will learn in your uh, chemistry and the biology course. Let's start with the famous Schrodinger's cat scenario. In this experiment, the cat is put into a steel chamber that contains radioactive atoms and a flask of poison. The chamber has this mechanism that upon emission of an energetic particle by one of the radioactive atoms, it will cause the hammer to break a flask of hydrocyanic acid, a poison. If the flask breaks, the poison is released and the cat dies. So here comes the absurdity. Um, if the steel chamber is closed, we cannot observe what's really happening inside the system, unobserved system, and the radioactive atoms in a state in which it has both emitted the particle and not emitted the particle with equal probability, then the cat is both live and dead, or both dead and undead. So Schrodinger put, the, put it this way, uh, the steel chamber would have it in it the living and dead cat at the same time. But when the chamber is opened, the act of observation forces the entire system into one state or another. In other words, the cat is either alive or dead by our observation. The spectrum that's visible to our naked eyes uh, is called visible spectrum. The infrared uh, is uh, what we use, uh, for example, in the next slide to check body temperatures. We get into the microwave range. And uh, one of the important applications is uh, microwaves in our kitchens. Uh, if you go to even longer wavelength, the waves are radio waves. So let's go to the other end, to the right of the visible wavelength. This is the UV range. And uh, the frequency now gets higher. So the energy of the photons gets higher. Uh, even higher frequency, lower uh, wavelength would be X-ray. And you all know X-ray is uh, frequently used for medical diagnostics. Even higher frequency, higher energy, lower frequency are gamma rays, which exist in space. So already this experiment suggests energy can be at a specific level or quantized. And uh, now we have to mention Albert Einstein. He was awarded Nobel Prize for his work, discovery of photoelectric effect. The point here is light or matter has dual nature. Bohr model really beautifully calculates how these four wavelengths are produced. To sum it all up, for electrons in an atom, it can go through quantum leaps. It can either get excited by going from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, or it can go through relaxation. Okay, from a, go from a higher energy level to a low energy level, and that process gives off radiation, gives off light. When energy is absorbed, electron can go from lower to higher energy. That is excitation. When electron goes from a higher to lower energy level, photon or light is emitted. In the process. Now we already explained those three observed line spectrum. There are po other possibilities of electron transition. For example, electron can go from n equals 5 to n equals 3 or n equals 4 to n equals 3 here and they would give off infrared light. 
this you guys can calculate exactly the way um, I showed you earlier. So verify for yourself the wavelength here correspond to infrared wavelengths. They should be longer than 800 nanometer. Whereas if the electrons go from n equals 5, say, to n equals 1, okay, so these transitions would give you electrons, uh, sorry, uh, photons in the UV range, okay, with wavelengths shorter than 400 nanometer. Energy is the fundamental to all life processes, and there are different types of forms of energy that you probably have come across it. But we're going to focus more on the chemical bonds. So the chemical bonds are trapped. So this is a cake, a little cake, right? That has sugar molecules. It also has a lot of fat. Now, if I have this, it will store in my body. And when my body needs it, we can tap into the chemicals compound that this cake is made out of it has sugars lipids proteins by just breaking all these compounds away or breaking them down we can retrieve the electrons we can strip the electrons that will uh, produce what is known as atp if there is an exchange both energy and matter with the surrounding it is an open system and we are an open system and this is all about the um, the first law of the thermodynamics you can't get something for nothing so this is an, uh, an equation energy can never be transferred or transformed but not created or destroyed however not all energy is uh, useful some of them will be uh, released as heat entropy is a disorder and we uh, we measure energy um, by delta s and it increases in uh, in entropy with the universe so just a matter of statistics here okay so that's the second law of thermodynamics so here we have a lot of disorder right because it's chaotic 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 and you've got the energy flow from one system to the end to the um, cold reservoir so what can we see here we see two different systems and the delta g here is less than zero and this is uh, greater than zero eventually everything will come into equilibrium because there won't be any more atp why because the body now has to source out glycogen has to take up glycogen has to break down glycogen or proteins or uh, lipids to make atp but if there's any other atp present it will reach equilibrium we talked about endo and exo positive reaction is not spontaneous negative delta g is spontaneous so if we have a positive and a negative in in chemistry and in biology we can couple the reactions and an overall for the cell could be negative what is the cell going to do with all this energy how is it going to cope and this is all about energy and metabolism and how from a cake like this we're able to extract the chemicals from the bonds to be stored as glycogen to be stored as fat to be stored as protein that when metabolism works we can extract that from the cells from the muscles from the liver to produce what is known as atp the currency of energy <music>